continue in worship as we take our Bibles this morning and turn to the 20th chapter of John's Gospel. John chapter 20 this morning, we'll be looking at verses 1 through 10. The empty tomb. The empty tomb. You know, one of the great historical evidences of the resurrection is the fact that the tomb was empty and no one was able to produce the body of Christ. You know, for centuries, men have tried to prove and disprove the, the fact of the resurrection. As a matter of fact, as Brother K.J. read from Scripture, our faith stands or falls upon the resurrection. John Locke, an 18th century British professor, said, Our Savior's resurrection is truly of great importance to Christianity. So great that his being or not being the Messiah stands or falls with the resurrection. You know, this is the approach that John has taken in his gospel. He has written this gospel for a purpose. The purpose, as we finally come to the 20th chapter of John, we've been looking at the gospel for over two years, but verse 31, we've reached that chapter, verse 30 and 31. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these, what, these signs have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. So that's the purpose that John writes this gospel with. That's what he has in mind. And last week we saw that John went to great detail to let us know that Christ died. He died a real physical death. It was a, de a death that was in his own timing. He gave up his spirit. But when the soldiers came to break his legs, there was no need because Christ was dead physically. That was proven by the fact that they took their spear and they pierced his side, and from his side ran blood and water. So John is more interested in minute details He's writing for a purpose so that you can believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. So that's the purpose of John's gospel. You remember last week we left Christ, uh, they were taking His body down from the cross. This was a hurried up process. The Jews had to get his body down from the cross before sundown because sundown meant the beginning of the Sabbath, which, and this was a high day, the feast of the Passover. So they did not want to defile their land by having the bodies of dead men on the tree, according to Deuteronomy 22, where that you had to get the bodies down before the Sabbath began. So now we read after the Sabbath, verse tw chapter 20, verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and, one of the, and the other disciple went forth and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together. And the other disciple ran faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and he did not go in. And so Simon Peter also came, following him, and entered the tomb. And he saw the linen wrappings lying there. And the face cloth which had been on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So the other disciple who had first come to the tomb then also entered, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. So the disciples went away to their own homes. Mary, verse 1, comes to finish a process that had been done very hurriedly to get things prepared for the Sabbath. She came with spices to, prepare, to, to finish preparing the body of Christ as was their custom. She could not do that on the Sabbath, so she waited for the first day of the week where she could come and finish this, this process. A part of their grieving process, a part of closure that would bring to the, 
uh, the death of a loved one. So she's coming as a friend, a dear friend of Jesus, to finish that. When she gets there, she finds that the stone has already been rolled away. Matthew tells us in 27, 66, that when Jesus died, they had made the grave secure. Along with a guard, a Roman guard there, they also put a seal around the stone. But when Mary got there, the stone had been moved. Not by the soldiers and not by grave robbers, but Matthew says a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone. Look at her reaction in verse 2. Mary does not believe in the resurrection. She assumes that Jesus is still dead. So she, she comes to Peter and says, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid them. See, to be resurrected from the dead was just as unusual in their day as it is in our day. As a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 17, when Paul is preaching at Mars Hill, and he just mentions the resurrection of Christ, Luke tells us that the crowd begins to sneer or mock him. And some of them just walk away. We don't want to hear that now. So it's so unusual. Mary does not believe in the resurrection. She's not convinced. She wonders, where did they take his body? When they robbed the grave, when they stole his body, where did they lie, lay his body? So, resurrection was unusual. Once you die, that's it. Dead people don't live. Verses 3 through 8, we have the account where Peter and John run to the tomb. Obviously, John's maybe a little younger, maybe in better shape than Peter, but he runs faster, he gets there, and when he gets to the tomb, he stops and just kind of looks in. But not Peter. Peter, in typical Peter fashion, just barges right into the tomb. He wants to see firsthand what's going on in this place. And John goes to great detail to tell us exactly what they find inside the tomb. The tomb is empty, except for the grave clothes. John tells us that they saw the grave clothes lying there and the face cloth was ro rolled up by itself. And John tells us when they saw the evidence, they believed. They, when they saw the evidence, verse 8, when he saw and believed. Now, did they quickly, you know, assume that if the body had been moved, the robbers would not have unwrapped the grave clothes, that they would have taken the body in the clothes. Because remember, these were wrappings that they put around the body. And so when they came in there and they saw the, the clothes lying there still on the table, just as if there had been a body in there, but it was gone. And when they saw the face clothes lying right there separate from the wrappings, just as if his head had been right there, and they walked in, they saw that, and they said, you know, if somebody had stolen this body, why would they unwrap it? Why would they leave the grave clothes right there? Surely if they'd have stolen the body, they would have taken everything at once and removed the body. Did they think that quickly? We don't know. But John tells us in verse 9 something very important. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So let me tell you this morning. They believed based on what they saw. They saw the evidence and they believed that Christ had been resurrected. The condition and the location of the grave clothes seem to be very significant. Again, John goes into great detail. And so when they saw the evidence, they believed. Again, John says their belief was not based on Scripture. In other words, when they walked into the tomb, they didn't immediately think, oh, this is what David was talking about in Psalm 116 or Psalm 118. Oh, this is what Isaiah meant in Isaiah 53. They had not connected the dots. They had not put it together. When they saw the evidence, they believed. 